Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to some more Terra Genesis episode 8 with the series here and look at our population! That's right. We're doing really really good right now. Uh, let's see, the richest woman on Mars among other things a famous book collector has died in hope. In her will she allocated funds for the construction of an enormous library. The largest ever built on this planet. Once complete this will transform hope into a powerful center for cutting edge thought and culture on Mars. Okay. <laughs> yes, we got 103,000 people. You can see we got a lot of culture points. Go ahead and spend that right now for our independence. We're almost there. Um, towards victory, that is. We'll take a look, actually. Oops, wrong thing. Take a look at this here so you can see we're at pretty much perfect for everything. Uh, we're just working on that. The uh, water levels on the planet temperature is nice pressure is nice oxygen is nice a little low but fine and actually what do we see we're not raising any of these i've got them all turned off but you can see that water still going up plus 38 a minute that's not a lot but it's enough now do i get great library of mars plus 700 credits nice you can see i've got a bunch of rich deposits here and stuff that's giving me a nice bonus uh but the current money growth is only plus 8,000. but we have 292 million so we're not worried about that now and I'll deal with it later so you can see that even though I am still increasing water levels I've slowly started building geo cisterns and that's because I've got to offset the water levels for things like the hab dome so I've just been slowly building these and upgrading them because like I said you know it's it's a marathon it's not a race um, you can try to get it as fast as you want but you don't have to so we'll go ahead and start upgrading the this geo cistern here I also have an o2 filter here because I'm trying to offset the oxygen under his guidance facility can be upgraded to a stun level X, our cloud seeder, and run without any maintenance. Sure. Where do we have a cloud seeder? Must be on hope. I, if it's there, it's turned off probably. Oh no, it wasn't. Well, that's fine. I just got to make sure I get these geo cisterns upgraded so we balance that out a little bit. Okay, yeah, so I've got the negative 10 oxygen here for the HAB complex. The other oxygen one comes from the HAB dome, and then just upgrading these. Now, you do see I've got an automated nursery here for plus one terrestrial species. I've also uh, done some other stuff. And then, actually, on Hope, I do want to go ahead, and I want to do this on camera, but I want to start building the spaceport uh, that does increase pressure. And so what we're going to want to do, and I've already researched it, is we're going to want to go into, not water, silly me. We want to go into pressure here and get the sequestration plant because that's going to allow us to offset that 10 pressure that we're going to be getting. And it's going to take two hours for that and 28 minutes for this. So I'll be able to upgrade this two or three times before that's actually built. But I think that pressure was a little low anyway. So it's okay if it runs for a little bit long. Yeah, not long though. Just a little bit. Like maybe, like maybe an hour and a half, two hours. All right. Um, so the other thing, yeah, I'll deal with the colonies here in a second to get these up and running uh, efficiently. Uh, we got to get the population up if we're going to get more points to actually win the game. The Sabout School District, District is experiencing a funding crisis. As a result, fewer students are engaging with the sciences and more focusing only on what can make them rich. An infusion of 833,000 credits could help curtail a significant shift towards a focus on wealth in our global culture. Well, I don't mind the focus on wealth. Decline. That gives me more financial growth anyways. Lowers research speed, but I'd rather get the financial growth. Not that we really need it, but... Oh, all right. So now it's time to do a couple of different things, which I forgot to mention that when we build the spaceport there, we'll be able to mess with the satellites. We can't do it now because we don't have a spaceport, but once we get it, I'll show off what that is. Oh, let's not look at the plant just yet. Let's go into the biosphere. So this is the biosphere. This is the part of the game that I haven't really gone over yet, and I wanted to wait until uh, we actually were able to do that and we had a planet where we could do it. So we've got terrestrial here and this is where we actually built that animal nursery. And there's a couple of different things we could pick through here. These are aquatic and we won't worry about these right now because we don't, we're not ready for aquatic, but. Over here, we've got microorganisms, plants, herbivores, uh, herbivores and carnivores. 
And obviously the herbivores and carnivores aren't going to do any good if they don't have plants and stuff. You know, carnivores got to eat their herbivores, etc. So it's best to start off with the microorganisms or work your way down the list. Uh, same with aquatic once you're ready to do that. But we need more water on the planet before we can actually start getting aquatic stuff going. I mean, we could do it now. It wouldn't be an issue, but we'll just wait till we have a perfect amount of water. So going to the microorganisms, we're going to create a new organism here. We have one available, as you can see. That's because of our animal nursery. And it puts us here in the gene library. So we've got uh, act uh, actinobacteria, uh, lichen, fungus, and protozoa. And if you click on them, it'll usually tell you exactly what these are. So these are our gram-positive bacteria that are critical to the soil systems of Earth, helping to decompose organic materials so that their nutrients can be absorbed by new life. As such, actinobacteria can be hugely helpful in setting up your ecosystem to support plants and other higher-order organisms. So these are probably one of the most important early games. The lichen is a composite organism that arises from algae and or cyanobacteria living amongst filaments of a fungus in a symbiotic relationship. They can be found anywhere from sea level to high altitude in a wide variety of environmental conditions, making them an excellent base for designing custom organisms in your world. They've got really good tolerance. We've got the fungus, uh, one number of a, uh, a karyotic organisms. Eukaryotic? I'm not sure. I'm going to probably butcher that. Uh, ranging from single cell microbes to larger systems. Most famously, mushrooms. They serve as excellent decomposers in the ecosystem. So, And then we got protozoa. Uh, un, um, unicellular, uh, yeah, Phew. it's been a while since I've, uh, it's been a long time since I've been in school and learned about all this stuff. I've, <laughs> I recognize the names, but it's been a bit, uh, traditionally defined as having animal like behaviors such as motility and predation. While the term has fallen in and out of favor amongst biologists, it serves as a valuable category when designing new organisms for ecosystems beyond earth. And they've got a really extreme birth rate, but I think that these are going to be the best ones to go with. So we're going to add that gene. You see they got a tolerance score of 0.89 right now. And the environment is pretty well suited for them. This is actually our current environment and then gives us a it spits out a tolerance score of how well they can tolerate in the environment we have. Now we can look at this and be like, oh, we don't have a lot of water. So maybe we want them to be uh, more tolerant to water. We can find something that would do that here, which I'm sure there is like some sort of Low pressure, high pressure, low oxygen, humidity, air right there. So plus 30% low water tolerance, plus th minus 30% high water tolerance. So as the water levels go up, obviously it's not going to be as good to use. I don't really know which one of these is going to be the best for our particular situation since we're going for kind of a paradise world. Um, support and receive. So we've actually got... Uh, or is this whether food such as wolves eating sheep or shelters such as monkeys living in trees or just to create the proper conditions for life such as plants relying on soil bacteria? Relationships represented one of three types. Support, micro blue, plant green, and animal red. This section shows the support requirements for the species and derives a score from what proportion is available. Only microorganisms require no support at all so they will form the base of your ecosystem. Very important. I'm thinking of getting... I don't want to get poisonous, nocturnal, delicate, extremophile, infectious. I was thinking of getting let's see beautiful huh interesting domesticated ah uh there's really not anything here that's like they have to really hit Huh. Minus thirty percent low pressure tolerance. Gain an increase to their birth rate from their greater mobility, but do poorly in low pressure atmospheres that make it hard for them to drift on the wind. I don't want to do any conservation for them. Projected health is already 156% without picking any of these. So they're going to survive regardless. If anything, we want to make it so they have a lower birth rate probably. Total growth growth rate plus 95% a minute. And they're going to su offer support. 
which is going to be important. I don't want them to have a huge effect aside from being life for plants and everything once we start getting plants and other microorganisms and we kind of start building all that up. Why don't we just go with something that's going to give us credits like beautiful but lowers the – we could probably – let me add this gene and see what happens. Still has a really high – and we're going to get plus 5,000 a minute for just basically them existing. And they still has a high projected health. Um, and we could raise that, but there's no reason. Um, 48%. Do we technically want to cut? I'm just going to stick with that. Why would I want to, when a species becomes endangered or threatens to become overpopulated, sometimes human intervention is necessary. Though the spending of credits, you can influence a species' health, either positively or negatively, whatever is necessary to maintain the health of your ecosystem. These changes will not be immediate, but they will alter the projected health of your species and continue to do so until you cease the efforts. You just leave it that for now and let it grow. Delicate, we could pick some other stuff, but I think that that's almost all, all we really need. Unless what we could do have them s a little bit total growth rate 0.47 percent a minute because we probably don't want them to grow too fast and if we do that they'll grow even slower because we don't want them to grow too fast but they'll be super rare very beautiful and give us lots of credits which would be really cool very slow growth rate, but I'm okay with that. A lot of health. Yeah, let's do it. I'm good with that. All right, cool. So we've actually got a microorganism on the planet. I'm going to take some time to actually be able to see him. He's endangered right now. He's going to go to ramp it. Current health, 1%. We can always adjust this to get it. We'd have to do minus 48% to make it good, I think, for the projected health to get it to 100%. Uh, that would probably be fine because then he's only producing 76 credits a minute, but at least he's not. At least he's not uh, gonna kill us off. I'll leave it at zero for now. We'll see what happens. I'm very new to the biospheres as well, so I, I'm f somewhat familiar with the function because I've messed with it before, but I've never really been 100%. I haven't like gotten this far with it, so this will be pretty exciting. Still, though, we're getting pretty close to to winning and having a really nice looking planet. I think we're going to need to also increase our population. I know we're going to need to, but I may wait until, and I can upgrade these. How much does that add? 25,000. So that'd be pretty good, but it adds a lot of oxygen and water. So I'll need to upgrade the geocisterns and everything, the oxygen filter before I do that. I'd probably be almost better off just building another one, but the, we can save all this stuff for next time. I'll do a lot more stuff off camera and we'll mess with it from there but yeah looking pretty good i gotta make sure i'm ready to turn the water off because we're getting a lot of water here and we just want to make sure we don't flood anything oh i've already killed us off oh because we had a harsh winter wow that was fast um i wasn't expecting that it's probably because i did the conservation oh i didn't do it though i didn't actually do it we actually just literally got unlucky um, wow. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just redo them real quick and see if we can get them to survive again. Yeah, we just had a really cold winter and I guess that that did it. Probably because of the rate of growth as well, I'm sure didn't help. Um, we could do airborne to offset that. Uh, they still have a really good chance of surviving. We just got really unlucky. Let's try that. 
Um, we got to call him something. Um, Bob's. <laughs> I'm not creative, clearly. Oh, it didn't. Did it work? All right. Well, I'll have to mess around with that off camera. Not a big deal. I'll get it up and running. I'll mess with the system more. And then I'll show you guys what I've done uh, later on and explain it to you. Uh, how I circumnavigated everything and got our first species on the planet. So I want to thank you all for joining me. I do hope that you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.